What up, what up? I'm your host, Following Christ, and this is your weekly wake-up call. Don't forget that you can follow me on YouTube at the name that's listed below on this video, as well as subscribe to this channel, um, Z-O-E-F-R-E-A-K, the number 9-5, to get these videos as they are uploaded. Don't forget that you can share these videos with any of your family, friends, co-workers, Facebook, Twitter, as well as favorite a video if you find one that you really do like or intrigues you. Don't forget that you can like us on Facebook at the name The Watchman for Christ. That's a page that myself and The Watchman 118 share on Facebook. Uh, we share our video links as well as post scripture and speak on things that are of a various biblical nature and prophetic as the world comes to a close of Earth's history. And today I want to share something with you that I am not really understanding. I am not getting this in my mind at all. It is boggling my mind. It's actually bending it. And that thing is, why is it that to so many people on this earth that it's okay to say that you believe in God just as long as you really don't believe in God or live by his word? I don't understand that. How can you say you believe in something, but you don't live it? That's dishonest. You're lying. What is it that would make someone want to claim to love God, but yet you're too ashamed to live by his word? Is this world, what in this world is so glamorous? Okay. Who are these individuals that you desire to hang around? Are they really worth living and dying for? OK, tell me, please, so that I can understand. I want to understand what on this earth deserves us giving up God for. All right. Everything that we see or that we shall see will one day cease to exist. So I'm not really understanding or comprehending what on this earth is of that much value that would make a man or a woman deny God and choose to live according to the way that the world lives, but yet they are ashamed to live the way that God has told them to live, the same God that they claim that they love. Everything, no matter who or what it is, on this sinful earth, is not worth missing out on eternal salvation. If you turn to scripture, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 9 verse 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his glory, or in his own glory and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. If you are ashamed to live for God, if you are ashamed to stand up on God's word, God says, do not commit adultery. Why are you ashamed to stand up? Because you don't want someone to get mad at you because you don't want to hurt someone's feeling. If you see someone cheating on their spouse, tell them they wrong and God knows they wrong. They know they wrong. It's a sin. If you don't stop it, if you don't repent from it, you will meet an eternal end when the world ends. Stop being ashamed of God's word. Call sin by its rightful name. It's sin. Stop being ashamed to tell someone that homosexuality is a sin. I don't care what anyone says. If you don't like this video, click and turn to another one. Homosexuality is a sin. The Bible says that it is an abomination to the eyesight of God. God created man to be with woman and woman to be with man. Not a man to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. That goes against the nature of God. It goes against how we were created. We are made to procreate. Homosexuality is nothing but a perversion of the devil meant to confuse and cause the demise of mankind. I am so sick and tired of hearing people, love is love. No, the Bible says that God is love. When God has said something, that is the way it is supposed to be. He said his word shall not return to him void. God defines what love is, not you, not me. God said that he is love and he said that he has made man for woman and woman for man. Don't judge me. Only God can judge me.
that has nothing absolutely to do with what the scripture is saying when it says thou shall not judge. The judgment that it is referring to is when someone thinks themselves to be self-righteous and telling someone else that they are wrong and condemning them to hell. Only God can do that. When the Bible says something is a sin and I tell you it is a sin, guess what it is? It's not a it's not a bunny. It's a sin. A duck quacks. If it quacks, it's a what? It's a duck. A cow moves. If it moves, it's a what? It's a cow. God says sin is sin. If you sin, guess what it is? It's a sin. I don't care if you do not like the message. Truth stays true. No matter if you accept it or not. My job is to tell you the truth because I love you and I do not want to see you burn in hell's fire. I want you to go back with Jesus Christ and to live eternally in the home that he has prepared for you. Give up the sin and give God his glory. Stop allowing the world and Satan to make a fool out of you. The Bible tells us in James chapter 4 verse 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. The Bible tells us clearly what is right and clearly what is wrong. Stop asking. Stop second guessing. Stop trying to fit in and do what God has told you to do. All the answers for how man is supposed to live are written in black and white in God's holy word. If you want to know something, get down on your knees and pray to God and ask for his spirit to give you discernment. The time for foolishness has been over. It is time to get ready for the second, term, second return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you claim you are a Christian, it's time to start acting like one. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 16, verse 15, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Stop trying to be people pleasers. Stop trying to do things to fit in. Stop trying to do and say the right thing that is socially acceptable because you are worried about losing a job, losing a friend, losing family. God is all that we need. Stop worrying about what someone else is going to say or think. As long as God loves you, as long as what you are doing pleases God, it should please everyone else. And if it doesn't, that's their problem and not yours. The Bible tells us that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. It is not our job to be people pleasers. It is not our job to live like the rest of the world lives. It's not our job to try to make everyone like us. It is not our job to fit in. It is our job to serve God and die. That's what we were created for. If you don't like it, kick rocks. My job is to tell you God's truth because I love him. And I love you even if you hate me. The Bible tells us in John chapter 15, verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. If the world loves you, if you want to be like the world, that means that you are of the world and all the evil that the world does and all the sin that they do, you are part of them. Even though you claim that I love Jesus, God says that you are of the world. The world is the enemy of God. If you are God's enemy, God hates you. Sin. Sin is his enemy. You are a sinner by nature. Only God can change our nature. But being ashamed of God makes you even more sinful and, and less likely to go back home with him when he comes to claim his children as his own. If you want this world, you can have it. I'm telling you right now, I'll give you my portion of it. You can have this sinful world. You can have this diseased planet. I'll take Jesus Christ every day of the week. I'm not sitting here babysitting and holding someone's feelings in my hand because I don't want to hurt you. I'm telling you to God on the street because I love you. Stop with the foolishness. Sin is sin. It's wrong. I don't care if I got to lose a job for God because God says he'll give me a better job. He says that he'll take care of me. I trust and I believe him and I'm going to obey him. If you are not going to obey him, that's your personal problem. Jesus is coming soon. You better stop playing. There's a reason why we ought to. To trust God. There is a reason why we ought to believe in God. We have no reason to be ashamed of God. 
The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, not to man, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There is no shame in knowing God. There is no shame in holding his word because we are here for God's purpose and not anyone else's. If you are really that concerned about how someone else thinks about you, you might as well bow down and start worshiping them because that's exactly what you're doing already. Give God his glory. Give God his praise. It's God that's made us, not ourselves. Finally, when we put others before God, not finally, no, 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 no. next to last, God desires for us to love him and worship him truthfully. John chapter 4 verse 23 says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. He doesn't seek people that pretend to love and glorify him in front of others to give themselves their own praise. But he seeks those that will worship him at all times, standing up for his truth at all times, not when it benefits them. Seriously, that's what a lot of us do. And you call yourself a Christian. A Christian is being Christ-like. Christ loved everybody. He just didn't love their sin. And he always tried to show them the error of their way. And show them the truth that it's God's way. Brothers and sisters, if you really love someone, you tell them the truth. If you really care about them, you show them the way. We socialize to save we go and meet people where they are. We help them. Get them to trust you. And you teach them God's way. That's what Jesus did. And that's what Christian means. To be Christ-like. Matthew chapter 10 verse 37 lets us know. That if we are more concerned about other people. If we are more concerned about the car that we drive. The money that we make. The things of this earth. Jesus says, he that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. If you love anything on this earth, if you are more concerned about what people think about you and how you are going to be viewed, God says you aren't worthy of him. If you are more concerned about the house you live in, the man you're married to, the woman you're married to, the person you're dating, the friends you have, your family. If you're more worried about what they're going to think about you, I am sorry to tell you that you aren't worthy of Jesus Christ. You aren't worthy of eternal salvation and being with God because those things will get in your way and they will separate between you and God and they will ultimately cause you to sin against them because you are more concerned about what they think and about what you have than you are about him. Is that not what caused the fall of mankind in the beginning? Because some man chose to love his wife more than he loved God. This is your host following Christ. And whether you like this message or not, you must always remember the truth will always stay true. It's time for all of us to wake up.